Yeah, it's coming through. I feel it moving in my head. Feel it moving. I feel it moving. It's calling my feet. Make me want to shout. Woo! Blessing, blessing. It's coming through. No more heartache. No more pain. I feel all right because it's coming through. <laughs> Can you feel it moving? Can you feel it moving? Yeah! Oh, yeah. It's coming through. Come on, let's give Jesus some praise in the house. Come on, let's give Jesus some praise. I don't know about you, but there is something, there is something unique in knowing that you have a Savior that will wake you up in the morning because you didn't have a battery and you were not charged to go another day. But it was the grace of God who gave you the quickening of the spirit. And you ought to say, thank you, Jesus. Woo! <laughs> he woke you up this morning. He gave you a little bit of energy to step, step, step. Gave you a little bit of energy to say, good morning. And you ought to say, thank you, Jesus. Never let a day go by without you saying, thank you, Lord, for giving me another day. Amen, somebody. Our preacher, he's ready to preach. I want you to put your hands together for my son, Adam. I'm so glad that God allowed him to be here to help us. And he was one that said, Dad, don't worry, I'll be right there to help you. And I just thank God for the help. Amen, somebody. So he's going to give us a word today. Why don't we just put our hands together after the choir sings and let him come and give you a word that God put in his heart and in his spirit because it's all about listening to what God have provided for us for this day. Amen? All right. Choir, you got a song for us. Let's put your hands together for the choir. Amen. Jehovah is your 
so blessed. Jehovah. Jehovah is your name. Thank you, Lord. Jehovah is your name. My, my, my. Jehovah. Yes. Jehovah. Your name. He's a mighty warrior. Great in battle. His name is Jehovah. Woo. I said he's a mighty warrior. Yes, he is. He's great in battle. Oh, it's because he's Jehovah. Yeshua Hamashiach is your name. Oh, mighty warrior. There's not a battle that he cannot win. Yes, he is. Jehovah. Is. I'm so glad he's a mighty, mighty warrior. There's no battle that he cannot fight and cannot win because Jehovah is your name. Hallelujah. What's his name? That's because he's Jehovah. I'm a Shia. Just give your battle to him. Let him fight your battle. He's mighty in battle, warrior. He's great in battle. Because, because Jehovah. He's a mighty warrior, y'all. There's not a battle that he cannot win. That's because he is Jehovah. <laughs> Come on, let's give him some praise. He fought your battle, y'all. Let's give him some praise. Woo. Thank you, choir. Oh, hallelujah. Come on, let's give God praise. If you know the if you woke up this morning and you know God is worthy to be praised, stand to your feet if you're able and give God praise. Oh, hallelujah. 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 Jehovah is his name. <laughs> Glory to God. He didn't have to wake you Thank up, but you. he did. He didn't have to put clothes on your back, but he did. My, 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 he didn't my. have to put food in your belly, but he did. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Yes, Lord. Hallelujah. Woo. Bless his name. You may be seated in the presence Thank of the you, Lord. Lord. Yeah. Hallelujah. We give honor to God for just another opportunity to come into his house to reverence him and to be able to just give him a small portion of what he's due. We could never truly repay what God has done for us and on our behalf. But what we have, we freely give. And I don't think he's asking too much. The Bible says, present your bodies as a living sacrifice. A living sacrifice. That means that we're not dead, not yet, 
But while we still draw breath, we ought to try our best with our one single tongue <laughs> to lift up praise to the God of the universe. The God who made heaven and earth. The God who saved and redeemed your soul. Oh, I wish I had somebody that was... Hallelujah. It's so worthy. Amen. Well, giving honor to God, and, and I, I don't intend to be before you long, but um, there is a word from the Lord. And, and Pastor, thank you so much for this opportunity to share. Um, we're looking at Matthew, the fifth chapter. If you have your Bibles with you, please, please take them out. If you have a note, paper or pen, please be prepared to write <laughs> some things down. But I, I think there is some things that God wants to express to us today. And in light of what he's been doing, I, I think it bears sharing. Yeah. Thank you, Sister Shelley, for reading the scripture this morning. And I'm going to read it, and, and then we can get right on into it. Matthew chapter 5, starting at verse 13. And the scripture says, Ye are the salt of the earth. But if the salt has lost its savor, wherewith shall it be salted? It is thenceforth good for nothing but to be cast out and trodden under the foot of men. Ye are the light of the world. A city is set, that set on a hill cannot be hid. Neither do men light a candle and put it under a bushel, but on a candlestick. And it giveth light unto all that are in the house. In verse 16, let your light so shine before men that they may see your good works and glorify your Father which is in heaven. Amen. The Lord's word is blessed. I want you to pray with me this morning on the topic of strategically placed. Father, we thank you for yet another opportunity to come before you. Open our ears and our eyes so we can hear and see your plan for our life, that you would be glorified. Father, we seek to please you in all we do, and live our lives accordingly. So, Father, we thank you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. So, this particular passage, and I know many of you have heard it in your hearing before, but this is Jesus in what we like to call the Sermon on the Mount. And in the earlier verses of this particular chapter, Jesus is talking about the blessed ones. We, as believers, are the blessed and as we look at these particular verses in verse 3, he talks about blessed are those that are poor in spirit, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. And he goes on, blessed are they that mourn, and they shall be comforted. Blessed are the meek, for they shall inherit the earth. And he goes on, and he goes on, and then he brings us to this particular part in the passage. And he says, ye are the salt of the earth. And now, in this particular passage, he's talking about salt and light. And, the, and he's using this metaphor to demonstrate our identity in him, in the kingdom of God. Now, there's some important things that we can certainly get from this, but the one thing he, he establishes right off the bat after he's identified that, listen, there's going to be circumstances in your life that are going to be negative. If you're mourning, that's a negative situation. It's a bad time. You can mourn over a loved one. You can mourn over loss of something. But he's identifying the fact that if you are an individual in Christ, if you are in the body, there are going to be circumstances where things are going to be out of your control. Do I have a witness? Have all of you been able to control every single thing that has occurred in your life? No. But Jesus, he's going on to, to really give us a different perspective on our suffering. He's saying you're going to be one who, who may mourn, but you shall be comforted. So we are no longer in a position of no hope. So again, he's establishing where we stand in him, in God, in relation to our identity. We are the blessed ones. 
even though at times we look around and we say, I don't see it. Or I don't feel it. Have you ever been there? Now, in spite of the fact that you don't see it or you can't see it or you don't feel it, that does not change your identity. You are who you are. Deacon Turner, you were born a Turner. Regardless as to how you may feel about it, you are who you are. So Jesus, he's, he's, he's enlightening um, us as believers to understand that in spite of the circumstance that you find yourself in, you are still considered in God's eyes the blessed ones. So he's going through this passage, and, and it's very important to understand this. Please hear me what I'm saying. And again, we understand what Jesus is saying here. But when the rubber meets the road, Practically speaking, we just don't see it. So he, he's going through all these things. And then in verse 11, he says, blessed are ye when men shall revile you and persecute you and, and shall say all manner of evil against you falsely for my name's sake. <laughs> falsely. So. We shouldn't be giving people, listen, if they already got the gun, don't give them the bullets. <laughs> Meaning, <laughs> do, pe do right by people. You know, if you're doing wrong by people and then they, they snap back and then you say, oh, how could you? Be? Now you're the victim. <laughs> All manner of evil things against you falsely for my name's sake. Not for your sake, but for his sake, for yeah. God's sake. All right. You are the blessed ones. Rejoice and be exceedingly glad for great is your reward in heaven for so persecuted they the prophets which were before you. Ye are the salt of the earth. Salt. Now, when we talk about salt in the economy of the Old Testament, salt was very expensive. There was a very high value to salt. And there, there was a reason for it because, one, it wasn't very easy to come by, but for what it did, it preserved things. It gave flavor to food. There was a lot of different purposes for salt, so it was very uh, expensive at the time. But what Jesus is establishing is we are the salt of the earth. So what does salt do? Okay. We ask, you, you know, what, what types of things do, do salt do? When we're talking about cooking, Okay. Now, how many of you have ever gone to, to make something and you're boiling a pot of water and you forgot to put the salt in the water? Have you ever done that? And then you put whatever you're going to put in there. You put your rice or you put your noodles or, or whatever it is you're cooking. And then you, later on, you go to taste the food. What, what does it taste like when the salt is not there? It tastes bland. But have you ever noticed that if you do that, or you make that little one, or that, that small misstep, if you try to add salt to it later, it doesn't quite do the trick. It's like you got to put more salt on it than you did than if you would have just put a little in the beginning. Well, here's the thing, and what the verse is saying here is salt will do what salt does. When it's not there, you know it. You need it a little bit. Salt of the earth. If it doesn't have its savor, it's not salt. Because salt is salt. How many of you have ever made the mistake of putting sugar in a dish that you thought was salt? Come on, talk to me. Have you ever done that? <laughs> Some of you shaking your head. Oh, no. I have... Now, that's a big mistake. How many of you did, have done that before? And, and you, it was a shock, wasn't it? You were like, oh, Lord. Now, as, as funny as that may seem, think about it. You made a mistake because salt and sugar look alike. Salt had its purpose, but you got a fraud instead. 
If we're the salt of the earth, are we working undercover? Do we look the part? Do we go to church? Do we go to Bible study? Do we go to prayer meetings? Do we do all these things? Are we a part of it? But are we really salt? Talking real, real, real talk. There's counterfeits. Now it's not up to you or I or anybody else to figure out who those are. God will do that. But we can't be deceived either. But salt has a purpose. To bring flavor, to, to, to make a difference. You know the difference when salt is there. And Jesus is saying, you are the salt of the earth. So where our presence are, is or where we are, that we should make a difference. We should, just by your presence, the atmosphere should change. Just by your very presence, you should bring flavor to a room where there is none. Jesus is saying, by your mere presence on the earth, you make a difference. So he goes on, verse 14, ye are the light of the world. And he starts to identify us as light. Jesus, while he was here with us, he walked, he was the light of men. In John, he talks about he was the word, you know, and he became flesh and dwelt among us. And he, he was the light amongst us, but he didn't keep, he wasn't content with keeping that for himself. But he said, I call you. And commission you to go out and to be the light of the world. We are the light of the world. Well, what, what does that mean? The light is meant to be seen. When you, when you talk to a videographer or a, a photographer, lighting is very important. Positioning of the lights is very important. Why? Because they want to dispel all the shadows. They want to get rid of the darkness. So they position the light so the darkness is no longer revealed. Light is needed where it's the darkest. Have you ever tried to turn on a flashlight outside in the sunlight? No, I mean, I, I think we've all done that. When you do that, you, you really can't see it unless you look directly into it and see, oh, yeah, the bulb is on. Right. Because you're surrounded by light, the light, it, it, it's, it's, it's minimized. But that same light, even if the batteries are low, in the darkest room, when you turn it on, it can be seen. And what God is saying is, you are in the world full of darkness. So it's important that you would be positioned properly to magnify the light that you shine. Again, the title of this message is Strategically Placed. God, in all of his wisdom, he has strategically placed you where you are. God is making a gumbo, if you will. And he says, I need some salt in this dish. And it's up to God to make sure the salt is present. God is saying, there's darkness in the world. I need my light to shine in the midst of darkness. Now, when we hear that, you say, oh, okay, that sounds good. But here's the reality. When you're in darkness... You're surrounded by darkness. When you leave this church and go to your home and your neighborhoods, some of you live in some dark areas. When we leave here or the sanctuary or the, 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 the ceremony and the worship and the praise, we go back to situations that aren't pretty. And God is saying, I need you to bring some flavor 
to this environment. God has placed you there. But sisters and brothers, understand this. As saints of God, we have to remember to not complain about our life and situation. That's hard. Real talk. Sometimes we say, why me, God? Why am I dealing with this troubled situation? Why am I having problems in my marriage? Why isn't the things working out on my job when I work the hardest here? Why aren't my kids doing right? And we say, God, what, what's going on? And God is simply saying, you are salt and light in this situation. Find out how you can change your environment. Because here's the situation. This is God saying this to us today. He put you there. So, God, what are you trying to tell me in this situation that I'm dealing with? Not, Lord, get me out of this. I can't take the pressure anymore. And God is saying, I've never left you. I'm here right beside you. But we want to rush the process and miss the learning lesson from the experience of struggle. If you've never been through anything, how can you testify about how God can deliver? If you've never been sick, how can you proclaim his healing? If you've never been broke, how can you talk about how God can provide and make a way out of no way? God is trying to tell us something in our circumstances, in our situations, right where you are. Stop looking for the way out and say, God, while I'm here, teach me something. And when I learn that lesson, let me be able to share it with somebody else. God has, he has put you in situations to develop you, to mature you. Look for the opportunities to honor God, no matter what. It's not always easy when the enemy is throwing up thing after thing, distraction after distraction. The, de the devil's going to do what the devil does. But guess what? The devil cannot change your identity in Christ. You are who you are. You're going to be salt, be salt. Don't be sugar. Don't be sweet when the salt is needed. Be who God has called you to be. God has the ability to call those things that are not as though they were. Believe what he said. He calls you a saint and not a sinner. He calls you his own. You've been adopted into the family of the most high God. Walk like you know it. God has given us divine authority in him. And even when you can't see how he's going to do it, just watch him work. He's done it time and time again. Oh, we get so caught up with worry. When God said, cast your cares on me, I'll care for you. You are who you are. Don't forget it. So as we find ourselves in these situations, it's, you know, I was thinking about it. You know, for the military, the men and women who have served in our military, thank you for your service. And, and you, you think about when you're in the regiment or you're in your platoon and your commander gives an order. And he says, I want you to go and take that hill. <laughs> and guess what you're going to try your best to do? Take that hill. But here's the thing, you, you know, it, 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 Oftentimes, when a commander gives a command, the soldiers don't even know what's the true purpose behind doing what they were ordered to do. Oftentimes, God calls us to do something or, or to do a particular thing, and we don't know how it's going to affect things on the other side. But the truth is, we don't have to know when we know God is trustworthy. 
Whereas a man could say, I want you to take that hill. And we're saying, okay, well, you know, we, we, can, we can suffer this amount of loss in this effort. It's okay. That's why they say, okay, well, we'll give him a purple medal if he happens to make it back. We didn't expect him to make it back, but God bless you. But God doesn't operate like that. But the thing is, God has strategically put us in positions to make a difference. And to the point, you know, on yesterday during the drive-by prayer, God had multiple congregations and saints and individuals to be a part of an effort to make a difference for such a time as this. Strategically attacking the city in prayer to the glory of God. If that was something that was in your power to be a part of, why wouldn't you want to be a part of that? An opportunity for ministry. To make a difference. Mm -hmm. Not for an individual. Not for a specific church. But solely for the glory of God. Yeah. That's why we're here, saints. We're not here for any, just, just, just to be here. You were not a mistake. In spite of what you've been told. There's only one of you. There will only ever be one of you for all eternity take full advantage as pastor always says take advantage of the time that you've been given don't miss your opportunity to minister when it comes because that is why we are here in the Old Testament example Esther she was you know she went through this whole process and was going to become the queen and Mordecai said to her, you know what, who knows? You may have been chosen and put in this position for a time such as this. Don't miss your opportunity to do the God thing. We don't have time to waste. We don't have time to waste. But I can't do your job. You can't do your neighbor's job. But we all have a job to do. Who are you and what are you? You are salt and light. He didn't say think about it. He didn't say maybe. He said he proclaimed what your identity is in the earth realm. Walk like you know it. God has placed us here for a reason. And it's not about you. It's not about me. It's about the glory of God. So as we look at, you know, I thank God for his word. And all of God's word, it's, it's been written for us to remember it. But it's also been written that we would change our perspective on things. Our thinking, how we view ourselves, how we understand who God is. God is working through us and, and in us and developing us. None of us have it all together, but together we can get great things done. Do I have a witness? Oh, hallelujah. I, 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 I love... The last verse, he says, and let your light so shine before men. Now, when he's talking about the men there, he's Not talking about people. their father. But guess what? By you doing what you did and they recognizing you're not doing it because you're just a nice person. You're doing it because you serve God. That draws them one step closer to a saving knowledge themselves. And it will get them to, to ask those questions like, well, why are you doing this? And that's an opportunity, a window of opportunity to share the gospel and say, listen, I, I used to be just like you. 
or I used to be a person that didn't care about anybody but myself. But the God that I serve, he touched my heart and he made me brand new on the inside. And that's why I did this thing for you. And you don't have to pay me back. It, God is going to take care of that. Don't worry about it. I love you because he loved me. And when we do that, that's when they will cry out, what must I do to be saved? Hallelujah. Jesus. Glory. They will glorify God, your God, and that will bring them closer to knowing them, knowing him for themselves. We've been strategically placed. It's not by chance you live where you live. It's not by chance you work where you work. God has placed you there for a season. For a reason and a season. Don't miss your reason and don't miss your season. Take advantage of the time for the glory of God to find out. God, all right, I'm, I'm having difficulty seeing what you want me to see right now. And I guarantee you, God will be faithful and reveal it to you. He will give you what you need to accomplish the task that he's laid before you. That's the God we serve. He didn't just put you there and say, all right, you're on your own. Have at it. <laughs> Elder Diggs, he, he didn't just say, you know, you're on your own. But like the song says, God is trying to tell you something. How many of you want to fulfill God's purpose in your life? Holly, amen, amen, amen. So that means... We want to seize every opportunity to do the God thing. Amen? Yeah. Yesterday was a good time yeah. to seize an opportunity yeah. to do the God thing. Yeah. I, while I, I was waiting, oh, after, after the event yesterday, I, I, I got an opportunity to talk to a few individuals from other ministries and churches. And it, it was such a blessing, so much love, so much fellowship. And um, this particular church, I was talking to them and the members were from Mount Olive right over here, the Seven Day Adventist Church. And they were out on a Saturday. Now, for, for those of you who understand that, you know, Seven Day Adventist, they worship on Saturday. That's their Sabbath day. That's their day. You know, they don't play with that. Okay? So that was pretty significant that they would be a part of it. I, I've had friends, you know, friends for years and people that, you know, I, I, I've known who were a part of that uh, church and that denomination. And that's something that they take very seriously. But they were here in full. And I just had to talk to them and just to kind of, you know, just thank them for just kind of being a part of this fellowship. And as I was talking to them, I said, man, listen, I just want to thank you for, you know, coming out and supporting the effort. You know, it's, it's not about this church. It's, it's, it's about our city and our community. And um, I, I know today is, is your Sabbath day, your, you, you know, your day. This is a special day for you. And he says, man, listen, this is ministry. This is what he said. This is ministry. What better thing to do on a holy day than to do ministry? And I said, man, he blessed my heart, blessed my soul. But again, here's the thing, and I share that with you just for you to understand. We can't be so quick to shoot down opportunities when God presents them. Now, you can't do everything, and I, and I get it. You know, a lot, we do a lot of different things. and There's always things going on, and you can't always be available for everything. I get that. But if I'm just sitting home watching TV, you know, I, which I love to do. My wife will tell you. <laughs> but if I'm not doing anything fruitful, why not? 
take advantage of the opportunity that God has given you because we've been strategically placed for such a time as this. Amen. Give God glory. Hallelujah. Amen. Pastor. Come on, let's give Jesus some praise in the house. Your reason for the season. <laughs> God has a way of preparing us for the season that we find ourselves in. Yes. But you have to know the reason that you are who you are. And it's because it's a season for every one of us to be active for Jesus. Yes, Lord. Yes. Can you feel it? Come on, let's give Jesus some praise in the house. <laughs> oh, thank you, son. That's a rich word. A rich word. And I hope everyone... Forgiveness! Thank you for your forgiving grace. Thank you for your mercy. Thank you for forgiving me. Thank you, Master. Jesus, he's the light of the world. Then you can hold your head up and say, Oh, let us walk in the light. Walk in the light. You careful light. Somewhere. Somewhere the dew drop. Mercy shine bright. Let us walk. Shine all around Yes. By day, by day and by night. night. Jesus is. Jesus, the light of the world. And that's what it's all about. So Jesus, after they had, I hope everyone have their communion. You have the little cup there. This one right here that's needed. A strange time that we're living in, but God has prepared you to be able to walk and to deal in it. Those who are prepared to take communion, if you don't have your cup, just raise your hand. God has prepared you to be effective in this day. For such a time as this, God has prepared you, you, and you, and you, and you, to be effective in a time like this. And we ought to say thank you, Jesus, for doing such a thing as that. And the Lord blessed it. He says, Lord, Father God, Bless this bread that has been broken. This little wafer represents a bread that Jesus broke. And he passed it to his disciples and said, Take ye, eat of it. This is my body that has been shed for the remission of sin. Take ye, eat of it. And Jesus... He prepared the wine for them. He said, this is my blood that was shed on Calvary's cross for the remission of sin. He says, as often as you drink it, you will always remember that I did something for you that you could not do for yourself. And he passed the cup to his disciples and told them to drink. This is my blood. Drink ye all of it. And he said to them, as often as you eat and drink of this bread, you will show remembrance of me until I come back for you on this earth. Amen, somebody. And the disciples, they just raised up their heads and start singing a happy song. And they begin to rejoice, thanking the Lord Jesus for doing such a thing for them. And that's what it's all about. And I don't know about you, 
But one of these days, God is going to show you something that is so unique. It's going to be him coming back. And that old song we used to sing, mm, when we all get to heaven, what a day of rejoicing that will be. I said, when we all see, see Jesus, Jesus. we will sing and shout the victory. Yes, when we all get to heaven, I bless your family. What a day of rejoicing that will be when we all see Jesus. And shout victory. victory when we all oh, get to heaven. Get to heaven. What a day of rejoicing it will be when, when we all oh, see Jesus. Woo. We will sing and shout. Woo. Thank you, Jesus. <laughs> Is it all right? Don't know about you. What are these days? We're going to sing and shout. We will sing and shout the victory. When we are. What a day. Ha! I don't know about you, but I, I never did learn how to shout. Because I never was a dancer. But some of you guys used to do all that foot stuff. But one of these days, you're going to shout because God was going to deliver you out of a situation that you thought you wouldn't be able to get out of. Amen? When He heals your body and made you whole, you're going to do something. I don't know what it is. I don't know if you're going to wave your hand like this. Stomp your feet like this. But you're going to do something. To let the world know that Jesus. He's all right. 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 You're going to tell the world that he can save. You're going to tell the world that he can heal. He's all right. He's all right. He raised my body when I was sick. He healed me from my... Yes, he did. He saved my soul. And I'm so glad about it. He's all right. <laughs> Amen. Amen. God is a good God. Son, you did a good job. Not only on the drum, but you gave a word. Not on the tongue, but you gave a word. <laughs> God is so good to us, isn't he? And we have a right to praise the Lord. Even in a COVID, even in a time that we're in right now, we have a right to raise our hands and say, Thank you, Jesus, for giving me another day, for giving me another chance to do what is right. Amen, somebody? God has given every one of us an opportunity to do something that is right. You have an announcement? That's right. We don't want to forget the offering. <laughs> Come on, girl. <laughs> Somebody say, you're taking all the time. We need the money to pay the bills.